I do like that RFK is one of the only candidates that is talking about putting home ownership back into Americans. This should not be a Democrat versus Republican thing. This should be local people owning their local communities. I was watching this random video of RFK Jr. speaking, and I really liked what he had to say about home ownership in America. He was speaking with Dr. Tom Lankingler from grassrootstv.org. Let's give it a listen. Rather than focusing on these little issues, the cultural war issues that keep us all at each other's throats, you have these giant corporations like BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard that now own 89% of the S&P 500. Yeah, true. That are buying now, you know, the land in our country, uh, agricultural land, the residential housing, the single family homes. And that's, you know, one of the reasons we're seeing this huge spike in in the price of single family homes because they're all being bought by corporations and they're transforming America from an ownership society to a rental society. And we will go, if that happens, from being a, a nation of citizens to a nation of subjects. Mm-hmm. And it was home ownership that really you know, created what at this 50 year period after World War II that economists and social scientists call the great prosperity when the American middle class became the greatest economic engine in the history of mankind. And it was largely, it was partially because, yeah, we had obliterated the, you know, the industrial base of Europe during the war and our industry was now cooking and everybody had, you know, wanted our products. I'm just going to pause it right here. I don't really like interrupting RFK because he is so smart. He really is churning out there. And no one really mentions that, uh, America was only doing so good after World War II because of all of Europe being destroyed. That is just so smart. But guys, I'm probably not going to interrupt as much just because uh, RFK really is cooking with something. One thing I did want to say, when he is talking about you know, uh, a lot of going from renting or from home ownership to renting, that's so important because you go into the hood, you go into bad places. People don't own their homes, and they don't care about their homes. I do like that RFK is one of the only candidates that is talking about putting home ownership back into Americans. This should not be a Democrat versus Republican thing. This should be local people owning their local communities. I really do even have a question on when it comes to landlords. Uh, Should landlords be forced to be within maybe a few states for ownership? People should be actually going to these homes that they're going and renting out. I don't think that BlackRock, Street Street, and some massive corporation should be owning your neighborhood. That should be something that you and your neighbors are allowed to experience with someone else in the community. And also because immediately after the war, we got almost every American, you know, into a home. (coughs) And with the GI Bill and the, and the highway system that made it a lands cheap so people could buy homes. And when, when you buy a home, you care about your community. You care about your, you go to the PTA meetings, you care about your schools, your transportation, your, your medical, you know, local medical facilities, your police, your firefighters. You care about the appearance, you care about your neighbors, but more. I'm not even going to lie, I forgot he talked about that, but that is so important what he's saying. You care about your community. You now have an entree to the American capitalist system because you can borrow money. If you own equity, you can borrow money. So if you have an entrepreneurial impulse, you can pursue it. You know, you can mm-hmm. invest, you can take a second <clears throat> mortgage and build a yoga studio or a bowling alley or a bar or a restaurant. And that widespread home ownership after World War II caused a, a ferment of economic activity. When I was a kid, America owned half the wealth on the face of the earth. We were the biggest exporter of goods. You know, we were the financial, uh, the, uh, the industrial dynamo of the planet. And a lot of that was because of widespread <coughs> home ownership. That's why Thomas Jefferson said American democracy is absolutely dependent on on the control of the landscapes by tens of thousands of yeoman Americans and their families, each with a stake in our system, on our economic system, and a stake in our, our system of government. And we're looking- I'm just going to pause that right there because it's making me remember, like, 
you know, the people that actually care about the communities are the ones that own portions in their communities. There's a big problem in America today where people don't vote in local elections and they don't vote in state elections. And sometimes they don't even care about referendums, right? You need to care about your community, regardless if you have the right opinion or the wrong opinion, a.k.a. you're voting uh, liberal most of the time. Uh, you know, you need to go out and vote. You need to actually be actively involved because you know what? If you're going to those PTA meetings, you're going to those city council meetings, you're talking to your neighbors that discuss, hey, I don't like the fact there's all these potholes. I don't like that our politicians are corrupt. I don't like the fact that they give us this much in taxes. You're going to start actually coming to the right solutions because you guys will start talking amongst each other. You're still voting for the right people. I really like what RFK is saying here that, if you own a home, that's where it all starts. If you're renting, which I rent by myself, but, you know, if you rent, you don't care as much about the community. It's just plain and simple. Well, losing that now, we're going to a feudal model. There's, mm -hmm. you know, these big corporations own everything. And then you look, you know, Americans are now borrowing money like never before. Why is that? It's because the average wage in this country, the average salary in this country is now $5,000 less than the cost of basic human needs. So the average American ends up $5,000 in debt at the end of every year. And they're, what are they doing? They're putting it on their credit cards. And the credit card companies are charging them 22% on average interest of a commercial fisherman from Wellfleet, Massachusetts, sent me, sent me a screenshot of his credit card bill the other day. It was 37%. Hmm. If the mafia does that, it would be called loan sharking. They be illegal. Uh, when Visa, MasterCard, say, um, Citibank, Chase, Morgan do it. It's just business as usual. Look, and I will say, I know people sign up knowing the risks, but sometimes they have this giant block of text. You know, people... Uh, sign up for things where they say, hey, I need an immediate fix. And a lot of times these companies prey on those people that need an immediate solution but don't have the financial expertise. And that's a big problem too. I don't think RFK goes into here. But if you go to the high schools, no one teaches you about financial expertise. It's like we have these kids nowadays that are coming out stupid. Even in my generation, a lot of kids did not really understand finances I am highly blessed and favored by God that I have a father like I have that actually taught me about, you know, how to do your finances, what a credit card is, why not to get into credit card debt. And the thing is, we give these kids, we allow them to choose their gender. We allow them at 18 to sign up for $200,000 in debt to go to college where you don't even know if this investment is going to be good for your life, if you're going to use that for your degree to get a job. I really like what RFK is talking about here with the debt crisis that we're really in. Let's get back to it. All of those companies are owned by BlackRock, yep. State Street, Vanguard, and we just passed a trillion dollars in credit card debt. It's a, it's a milestone. You know, it's gone up three hundred thirty billion dollars in three years. Oh, all of those, and then you know, the war machine. All of those companies that are making money on you know Ukraine. Uh, General Dynamics, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, Boeing and Lockheed, all of those companies are also owned by BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard. So as you can see, there's a very high incentive for BlackRock to keep us into the perpetual wars. And, you know, and they're driving our foreign policy and they, they keep us in this state of war. So, and those companies are also funding the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. And so you have these corporate duopoly that, yep. you know, is basically pretending to disagree with each other on culture war issues, but they're actually on the issues that are actually affecting our lives. It is one. They agree. When you look at the debt, they agree on the debt by just raising the debt ceiling. You know, they don't agree on term, you know, they, they agree on not instilling term limits. They agree on screwing you over and giving you the shaft. Uh, they agree on perpetual war. It's insane. One huge party. And, you know, me running as an independent allows me to step outside of that matrix and say, you know, we're not going to do what they tell us to do. We're going to go back to our values. Guys, that's just a portion of a very amazing interview between 
RFK Jr. and Dr. Tom Lankering, where it's mainly RFK Jr. talking and just him really spitting some hot facts. I'm really excited for him to be within a presidential debate because I think it's going to be him, President Donald J. Trump, and Joe Biden. And I think President Trump's going to get refined uh, and become a better candidate with someone like RFK. I almost wish that RFK would run as Trump's vice president, but I like both of them a lot. And I think you're going to see both these two intellectual giants dwarfing Joe Biden. It's going to be insane. Guys, if you like the content you saw here, you want to see more news, more reactions, more videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you watch to the very end, comment your favorite type of rock. Uh, I don't know what this is, but I really like it. It's smooth. God bless.